Deaths of 11 people on the world's tallest mountain is casting a shadow as Nepal marks its annual Everest Day. The government is blaming the weather for the number of deaths this season. Uh, the chief tourism official says a short window of good conditions caused a traffic jam on the mountain, not overcrowding. Now, the country is now considering changing its permit requirements. Now, since the first successful summit in 1953, about one third of those people who have died on Mount Everest were Sherpas. And joining me now is someone who argues that there are too many people at one time on the mountain these days. He is a son of the late Tenzing Norgay, the first Sherpa to reach Everest summit, along with Sir Edmund Hillary. Uh, he is trek guide and author Jemling Tenzing Norgay, who joins me now from Darjeeling in India. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. It has been 66 years since your father first made that pioneering first ever summit. Uh, this Everest Day is meant to celebrate that, but it also comes during a, a time of uh, quite a number of deaths. What is to blame for this spike of deaths on Everest this year? Well, it's uh, very sad and disturbing to hear, you know, 11 people died on Everest this year. And not because of the weather, but because of the traffic jams. And that's something you never hear, you know, on mountain like Everest or any other mountains. You know, traffic jams happen in the city, you know, in New York City or, you know, waiting in line restaurants, you know, long queues, but uh, this is um, not thought about at all. And it's very disturbing and shocking. And I hope uh, there are ways that um, this can be prevented actually by the government of Nepal by issuing, you know, less permits or permits to able climbers who are able to get a recommendation or reference from the origin of country, you know, from the alpine clubs of different countries stating that these people are fit to climb the mountain. Yeah, you're saying that the cause of these deaths, it's not the weather, it's the overcrowding. And of course, the world has seen the photograph that's gone viral of the queue, the crowds at the very peak of the summit of Mount Everest. When you have overcrowding like that, does that risk the lives of everyone, even the most experienced mountaineers, even the most experienced Sherpas? Yeah, exactly. I mean, when you have a traffic jam, you are locked up. So whether you're the best climber in the world or the slowest climber in the world, you're stuck in that jam. And it doesn't matter you know, how experienced you are. So I think uh, there needs to be some crowd management. Uh, the tour operators in uh, the base camp need to work on a schedule, you know, sending different groups at different times. Because there's only a few um, days, you know, where the window of opportunity to get to the summit clears up. Yeah. And in one season, you might get five or six days of those. Uh, you know, spread out within uh, two weeks and uh, uh, towards the end of May. Now, something needs to change. Um, as you noted just a moment ago, government officials in Nepal, they are discussing the issue. They, they say that they're looking at changing requirements for issuing permits. Is that the solution? Well, yes, that is a beginning, you know. it's uh, At least the government is thinking about doing something about it. And we talked about this with the Nepalese government in 1996, when uh, one of the worst disasters in the mountain history occurred. Remember climbing and making the IMAX film. And nine, nine climbers lost their lives in one night because of the storm, and there were too many climbers on the mountain. And the government uh, said that they will change the policy on um, you know, the number of permits they issued. And the following year, you know, nothing changed. It, uh, you know, they issued even more permits. So I hope this time the government uh, will take steps and measures to make sure that you know, able climbers, uh, climbing people who have uh, climbing experience, you know, take a bio data, get the reference letters from different uh, alpine clubs from uh, the different countries, and give it to those who, you know, actually are fit enough to climb this mountain. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you about that because the issue of permits, right now it's being talked about restricting the numbers, the, the quantity, but what about the quality? You know, your, your thoughts on the, the mountaineers today, has their ability, has their attitude changed since your father, Tengzi Norgay, first climbed Everest? Well, yes, of course it has over the 66 years now, because when my father and Hillary, uh, when they climbed Everest, you know, they were the pioneers, they were explorers. You know, they paved the way for us, and uh, they showed us the way. He was one of the first people to open the route on this mountain in 1952 when he went with the Swiss. And today, you know, nowadays it's become more of a bucket list for people, uh, CEOs of different companies, people who have money, they want to take it up the bucket list saying, oh, all right, well, 8,000 people have climbed Everest so far, maybe I have a chance. And if I give extra money, you know, to the guiding companies, you know, I'll get a heater, I'll get computers, I'll get extra Sherpas, they'll carry the oxygen for me, they'll do all the work for me. 
And uh, so it's become almost like a joke, uh, you know, to climb this mountain these days. Yeah. You know, as you said, it's turned into something to check off the bucket list. You know, you yes, have yes. scaled Mount Everest, which is no easy task. What is your message to people out there who want to achieve what you did, what your father did to conquer Mount Everest? See, I think the most important thing, anything you do in life, is do it because you're passionate about it. Do it because you love doing it. Otherwise, you should not be that at all. You know, because if you have no experience, you come on a mountain like this, learn you to put on your crampons, you know, for the first time, walking on ladders for the first time. You know, you risk your life firstly, and then you risk the lives of the team members. And finally, if anything yeah. happens to you on the mountain, you risk the lives of 10 or 20 Sherpas trying to bring your body down or bring your, you know, bring you down when you're injured, which is not uh, fair. And I think it's um, very selfish to do that. So learn, Absolutely. practice, take your time, you know, and then uh, when you're finally ready, you know, then come and the mountain's always there for you.